Okay, my name is uh, Kathy Acapelli. I've been breeding short hairs since uh, 1997. And um, I don't breed that often, but uh, maybe every two or three years. Um, I'm also the president of the Long Island German Short Hair Pointer Club, and uh, that keeps me pretty busy. Uh, we found a, a kennel to, with uh, nice credentials to go buy a puppy from and they showed us the pedigree and how all the dogs in the pedigree were show champions which you know we were just looking for a hunting dog but we were impressed by that and um, we got our dog he wasn't a show dog but uh, he was a great hunting dog and a wonderful family companion and after a while we added another one and I said well you know this time why don't we get one we can show and that was in uh, 1988 when we got our first short hair. In the meantime, they helped us raise our children, and our children helped us raise them. And uh, they're a very huge part of our lives now. And they're the kind of dogs that, um, they're pretty clever. So if you don't keep them busy, they'll find a way to be busy, and they'll probably be doing something you really wish they didn't do. Like eating your remote controls, or your clothes, or your carpets, or your furniture, right? Destroying your house. So they're, they're a very energetic breed and they have to be, um, they have to be paid attention to. <laughs> of course hunting, they love to hunt, but um, you know, in this world, in this life, not too many people, especially living in New York, not too many people can go hunting every day. So uh, anybody that was maybe a hiker or a jogger would be good. Any kind of outdoor activity, I mean, frisbee, anything that gets them busy. The, the great thing about German Shorthead Pointers is if you participate in AKC events, you could almost never run out of an event to play in because you know some breeds can do some things but German short hair pointers can do almost anything. They can do um, hunting tests, field trials, dog shows, obedience, rally obedience, they can now do allure coursing, they can do retriever trials now, they can do agility, they can do dock diving. And you could really never run out of titles which is a great thing about them. Once the puppies are born you know they, they require not as much care in the beginning three weeks when their mother is feeding them, but they still need to be weighed daily, you know, checked on, um, handled, so you know, handled, socialized uh, a lot in the beginning. Then once they start to eat food, of course, there's a lot more work goes into it because then the mother doesn't do the cleaning, the, the breeder does the cleaning. Luckily, nobody minds coming over to help you play with puppies. It helps them uh, develop a really nice, you know, trust in people when they're, they're held and they're never harmed. It helps their temperaments in the long run. Health testing is very important to me. I've spent a lot of time uh, reading about it, learning about it. We x-ray hips and elbows at two years old. Uh, they get uh, cardiac um, Doppler echoes before they're bred. They get their eyes checked by a canine ophthalmologist every year for SIR for OFA certification. Uh, we have um, something called CHIC, which is canine health um, database. And to get a CHIC number, you need to have tested hips, elbows for cone degeneration, uh, cardiac via um, a board certified cardiologist. It does mean that the tests are all online at OFFA.org and you can go look them up and see what the result of each test was. Really sometimes it, it feels more like when you're, you're selling somebody a puppy you're more like inviting them into your family because then they become family and um, you know for at least at least 10 to, to 15 years they're gonna have a dog that's a part of you that, that you uh, you never, you never forget the puppies that you, uh, that you bred, and they're always special to you. And when they see you down the road, they always, they always know you.